Hi, my name is Jason, and I'm here to tell you about the three pieces of equipment essential for wildlife videography. So the first piece of equipment you're going to need is a camera. Of course, you need a camera to shoot videos. And what camera is best? Well, I'm not going to go through every possible model that exists today, but I would suggest getting a recent model mirrorless camera. Now, I know DSLR as they can shoot video too, but with a DSLR, you cannot use the viewfinder when you're shooting video because the mirror has to be up to expose the sensor to record continuous video. And the problem with that is that birds and mammals and other creatures move around very quickly. And it's really important to be able to find those subjects in the viewfinder. And a mirrorless camera allows you to use the viewfinder when you're shooting video. So as an example, I shoot all my wildlife videos on the Panasonic G9. I think that's a great camera. But any camera like the Canon R6 or the Nikon Z6 or the Sony A9 would be good wildlife video cameras. Now, if you're doing research on a camera to buy, I would suggest looking at three features. Number one, does the camera have IBIS? What is IBIS? IBIS is in-body image stabilization, and that just stabilizes the image when you're shooting video or photos. IBIS is important, in my opinion, because I like to shoot handheld a little bit. And it's not always feasible to shoot on a tripod, especially if you have to climb down into like a volcano or a crevice with a rope, then you're not going to want to bring down your tripod, you'll just want to bring your camera. So I really do recommend IBIS. Another feature that's really important is shooting at higher frame rates. Animals and birds move very quickly, so shooting at higher frame rates is important if you want to capture your footage in slow motion. Now, what frame rate should you look out for? Well, typical videos are shot at 30 frames per second. So if you want two times slow motion, you'll want 60 frames per second. So if you want to shoot in 4K resolution, you should look at if your camera supports 4K 60. A lot of cameras out there even support 120 frames per second, which is really cool for really slow motion effects. Rolling shutter is a thing that happens when your shutter doesn't read the data fast enough from the scene. And you can see it in some cameras by moving the camera really quickly, and then you'll see some jello effect in the video. So that kind of jello effect is something you want to avoid. So a small amount of rolling shutter is really important. What about the lens? I love lenses, and lenses are the soul of photography and the heart. So what lens would I recommend? Now this is a little different than photography because in photography, I would recommend getting the most expensive, sharpest lens you can get if you want to take pictures of animals and birds. However, for videography, my suggestion is a little different. Instead, I would recommend to get a zoom lens. Now, I have an example of a zoom lens right here that I use sometimes. I actually use this on my Nikon DSLR. And then I started shooting the Panasonic G9 for video. So this is the Tamron 150-600 G2 lens. And it's a zoom lens that is very versatile and can zoom in really close to an animal to get some really nice shots. And so I've actually adapted this to the Panasonic. It's not the greatest setup, but it's not that bad either. And the reason why I said it's not the greatest is because uh, it uses this Viltrox adapter and this adapter doesn't work very well with this lens. But nonetheless, uh, I, ca I can capture really good shots with it. So a zoom lens is best for wildlife videography. Now, luckily, there are many good zoom lenses out there. For example, if you're shooting Sony, the Sony 200-600 is a beautiful lens. It's not only good for video, but it's also good for photography too. So I think that's probably one of the best zoom lenses on the market today. With Canon, you have the Canon 100-500, or with those systems, you can also adapt DSLR lenses on your mirrorless camera. For Micro Four Thirds, uh, both Panasonic and Olympus have 100-400 zooms, and those are, would be perfect for wildlife videography. So you have a lot of options out there, and you can also check in the video description below because I've written a few of these suggestions there. So what's the final item that you'll need, the most essential item perhaps? Well, it's actually an ND filter. What's an ND filter? It's a usually circular piece of glass and it's kind of dark and it stops some of the light from reaching the sensor. So it reduces the amount of light reaching the sensor. Now this might seem quite strange because in wildlife photography, there's never enough light. I'm always removing noise from images and I'm always trying to get as much light onto that sensor as possible. However, with video, 
Let's say you're shooting at 30 frames per second. Well, the shutter speed for 30 frames per second is around 1 over 60th of a second. Now that's a lot slower than you typically use for wildlife photography. Okay, so if you're shooting at such a low shutter speed, your shot might still be overexposed even at the base ISO. So what do you do? There are only two things you can do. Number one, you can use an ND filter and that's the good way. Or you can stop down your aperture. The problem with that is you might have to stop down your aperture a lot to say f11 or even f16 to get a proper exposure. And then let me tell you that if you're actually shooting at f16, the lack of sharpness in the lens at that aperture is going to be very apparent in your video. So I would never recommend shooting at those apertures. Besides, if you actually shoot at those apertures, you'll often get too much depth of field and the video quality won't be as good. So what kind of ND filter should you get? Well, I recommend getting a two-stop filter. Now, 95% of cases, I find the two-stop filter enough because I'm willing to shoot at f5.6 or f8. Now, if you want to shoot at faster apertures, you might need a stronger ND filter, like a three-stop filter. If you have a two-stop and a three-stop filter, you can actually stack them to get a five-stop filter. And I have uh, both a two-stop filter and a three-stop filter here. Now, I actually switched the filters around. I put the three-stop and the two-stop and the two-stop and the three-stop because the darker package is the three-stop and the lighter package is the two-stop, whereas before they weren't. Maybe that's not important. So let's see what it's like to shoot without an ND filter. In this forest, I captured a scene of trees. And I set the aperture at f4.6, which was the maximum aperture at that zoom length. And I'm at base ISO. I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, so I set my shutter speed to 1 over 60th of a second. And you can see that a lot of the scene is still overexposed. Now I attach a two-stop ND filter, and you can see that the detail returns in the scene. So even in this dark forest environment, we see that if some light sunlight is coming through the trees, then I still need an ND filter to get a proper exposure, even at base ISO. So those are the three pieces of equipment that are most essential for wildlife videography. You might notice that I didn't mention a tripod. Do you need a tripod? Well, a tripod will make your shots look a lot better. Even with the latest VR and image stabilization methods, a tripod will still often look better. I didn't include it in this list because it's not absolutely essential, but I do find a tripod very useful. And if you do get a tripod, you'll probably want to get a fluid head so you can make panning shots. Again, you can create panning shots without a tripod, but they'll look much better with a tripod. Now that being said, most photographers probably already have a tripod, so you can also include that in your gear to take wildlife videos. So I hope this video was helpful and I would be interested to hear your opinions in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.